back off. Or excuse me, I'll step away from you. Okay, then don't talk to me. And no one's forcing you to talk, but you guys are in a public space. You understand that, right? Well, you don't have that right. This is Canada. I can film whoever I want. If you don't like that, you can go in your house. On May 9th, thousands of Canadians gathered across the country to join the annual March for Life, seeking to raise awareness on equality rights for the unborn and ultimately shift our culture into viewing the practice of aborting unborn babies as unthinkable. I'm Drea Humphrey here with my boots on the ground at Centennial Square in Victoria to bring you one of multiple March for Life 2024 reports that you can watch and support at our special website called rebelfieldreports.com. Oh, come on. Do you feel good today? Yeah. The sun is shining. It's great to be alive. And sometimes that's the message that we just all need to remember ourselves being pro-life means being pro your life too, so. A fetus in its mother's womb. Is that a precious child who is deserving of the right to life like you and me? Or a clump of unviable cells that only become an unborn baby if its mother so chooses? That's the pro-life versus pro-death, I mean, pro-choice debate that's alive and well in Canada, one of the very few countries that have zero laws to protect an unborn baby at any stage of development in its mother's womb. And a country where its liberal rulers, well, they believe the following is the Canadian way. Freedom of a woman to choose belongs to her and her alone. In Canada, every woman has a right to a safe and legal abortion. And this government will never back down on defending and promoting women's rights in Canada and around the world. But the family-friendly bunch who have gathered behind me at Centennial Park in Victoria after getting off of buses and walking from Catholic and Protestant church services that were held nearby in preparation for this demonstration, well, they see abortion differently. And they hope, like in the United States 2022 groundbreaking win for the unborn, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which led to states being able to make their own abortion laws, well, they hope something like that could be happening in Canada soon. Let's hear why they have decided to choose life. Why was it important to be a part of the march today? Yeah, I wanted to stand for life and also bring our seminarians at uh, Seminary Christ the King for their own experience here. What made you decide to be pro-life? Because I think life is precious and life should be taken, not for, taken for granted. So you must choose life. That is why I'm working. Yeah, all my life I've been drawn to the movement, but I would say that I wasn't really brave enough to jump in. Whereas now, after the loss of my son, I have a new appreciation for how valuable life is and how each life does deserve to be defended and life in general deserves to be promoted. I have heard someone say to me, I don't want to oppose this person's request for euthanasia because I don't want my last interaction with them before they die to be a negative one. And we are very peaceful, nice Canadians who don't like to upset people sometimes. But I want to encourage all of you that mounting resistance to a person's suicidal ideation is always an act of love. Yeah. Yeah. Mounting resistance to suicidal ideation is always an act of love. Now, Amanda, you were up there, you were one of the speakers today, and in large, you spoke about sort of the hopelessness people feel when it comes to wanting to euthanize themselves. Tell the viewers uh, one or two of the misconceptions when it comes to people believing that it's the right thing to do to assist people in their suicide. During the talk, I spoke about how the number one reason, according to people's own admission, the number one kind of suffering that leads them to request euthanasia is a loss of ability to participate in meaningful life activities. That's according to the Health Canada report. But as I drove home at this rally, we never lose the capacity to participate in meaningful activities. I'm very inspired and many people are familiar with Viktor Frankl in the book Man's Search for Meaning. So 
As Viktor Frankl drives home in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, the human person never loses the capacity to respond to even adverse circumstances of life. Please don't film us. Um, you know you're on a public... Don't touch my property. Please don't film Do not touch my property. Please do not film We're in front of the legislator. Don't intimidate me. It's not going to work. Back off. Or, excuse me, I'll step away from you. Okay, then don't talk to me. No, and no one's forcing you to talk, but you guys are in a public space. You understand that, right? Well, you don't have that right. This is Canada. I can film whoever I want. If you don't like that, you can go in your house. Well, I was excited to see if we could get the other side of the story here for a minute, but right away, this man here uh, touched my property, which is against the law, in case you didn't know. Can I talk to you for a moment, starting with what does your sign mean? Foster kids for abortion. Um, I was in the foster care system, and I just believe that if it's your health and your safety, that they should have access to that. I'm a nurse who works in hospice care, and I know how difficult it already is to have access to things like MAID. I have certain residents who stop eating um, because they just don't want to be here anymore. And I don't like watching people slowly kill themselves when they just, they should be able to die around their family in a safe way instead of having to starve themselves and to do things. I'm not, I'm not for, you know, if I got pregnant, I would keep a baby. I love kids, right? I'm just saying, I just want people who need that safety to be safe and to not have to suffer like I've watched people suffer. Now, I just learned a fact here today. I'm not gonna call it a fun fact. And that is that Victoria in particular is one of or the highest when it comes to assisted suicide. We have a tell-all documentary coming up at madedocumentary.com for those of you who want to know how you can watch and support it. But what would you like to see be the first change when it comes to medical assistance in dying in this country? Well, first and foremost, I think we need a cultural change so that it becomes less popular and that we stop conceding to people's suicidal ideation. Many Canadians think that the nice thing to do is to always respect a person's freedom, but mounting resistance to suicidal ideation is always an act of love. And so that's why you can take confidence, you can be courageous in pushing back. Now, Victoria, as you say, is the euthanasia capital really of the world, and even the leading euthanasia doctor who lives here mentions that in her own memoir. There are many seniors living here. It is a retirement kind of community. And really being here, especially today, it seems idyllic. And I think many times people think that suffering and disease break through this idyllic, paradise-like environment, and they think it's the disruption of people's activities and going about their lives. But we have to tell a different story that when you are suffering, when you have a disease, when you have a disability, it is a joy for us to care for you. And you belong in the human community, just like all of us. And are you aware that there have been elderly people who have been offered made when they don't want it repeatedly? Yeah, What's your thoughts on that? Um, if they don't want to do it, no one's going to make them. I know how difficult it is to get the maid service because I work in hospice care. And I have a resident who's currently starving himself. He's been starving himself for two months because he doesn't want to be alive. And then I, have, I have an aunt who is currently in a vegetated state and we had to make that decision and we did not want to make that decision. Yeah, that's hard. I've been there too. Yeah. I'm sorry you're going through that. I genuinely yeah. am. Why did you become a pro-lifer? Um, because I see the gift of each person. Yeah. And what would you like to see happen in Canada when it comes to abortion? Um, I think it's not just with abortion, but I'd love for every life to be valued and given the support to, um, for those that have that gift of life, whether it be an elderly person or a woman in the child in the womb, to be able to have the support to take that courageous step of, of loving them into life. Why was it important to counter protest today? Because I believe that every woman should have the right to choose what happens to their body and so for instance in my case a lot of genetic disorders in my family both sides um a lot of mental health disorders and um like i have endometriosis all of that i had to have a hysterectomy um if i were to have a child it would kill me 
So the either way, I would end up dead. Mm -hmm. Who's caring for that child if it lives? Also, for me, it's a financial burden. I can't work. Um, I don't have the money to raise that baby and there's no one else to support me financially to help raise that child. What type of change would you like to see happen in Canada when it comes to abortion? Yeah, my hope is someday that abortion can be banned and that we, not only that, but only promote a culture of life where we respect life from beginning to its natural end. Now here you are, a pregnant woman. Your pro-life is connected to the birth and loss of your son. So what do you make then of the argument that pro-life goes against women's rights? Oh. I think that denies so much because what about the right of that person? And it is an honor to carry another life. To be able to carry a life is an honor and we shouldn't skip over that. I know it can be very difficult and it can happen when we're not expecting it, not ready for it, and we may feel like we're not able to do it, but it's, it's our obligation to love who we are given and to try to become better so that we can take on the role that we are given. I appreciate um, the dialogue. No problem. Um, I'm not here to say that we should make it easier, but I don't want it to be harder either. And so when I see groups of people here, I'm not... I don't want them to make it harder because I already know how difficult it is to get made for my residents. I can only speak from my experience, just like I'm sure you're like speaking from yours, right? I'm just asking questions from yeah. what I know and, and just genuinely I got lots of interviews so I'm just getting yeah. your side of it. Um, that's, that's really all I have to say, I mean, yeah. Last question, do you think the people that attended here are ill-intentioned? No. no, no, I don't think that they're ill-intended. Um, but I think that meeting in a large group and thinking that you're not trying to make the rules harder is ignorant. And what about uh, people who say, well, you're not respecting the woman's right to choose. It's her body. The woman has a right to choose, but does not mean that you have to kill a baby. You have to make the right choices in order not to kill a human being. Is it wrong to kill someone who's innocent? Well, I don't believe an embryo is a person. Why? Because it's a clutch of cells. There's, there's no consciousness. There's nothing to that. But you're a cluster of cells. I am, but I'm also a fully grown adult. Okay, so if someone is underdeveloped, and they're a cluster of cells like you and I, when do they become a life to you? When that child is born. So I think when we make abortion legal, I mean, I, honestly, I, I would love to see an end to that because when we make it legal, people think it's okay, it's more accessible, and we forget to look at all the other options that are out there. And there are so many great options for support, and a lot of that gets swept under the rug and doesn't get properly explored and exposed. Do you value your own life in the journey that you went through? Yes, now I do. Um, but for a good long time, I really wish that I could have been dead because my life was very hard, miserable. Um, dealing with addictions, mental health, all sorts of awful stuff. And it took a good 35 years for me to come out of that. And through that whole time, I was suffering. So, I mean, yeah, there was plenty of times where I wish I could have had, you know, made. Well, it was a big turnout in Victoria for this year's March for Life. Many who were pro-life and a handful of people who are pro-abortion. But Rebel News had our boots on the ground. I didn't see any other media in sight to bring you both voices. If you appreciate the work that we do to bring you the truth 
as well as want to check out the other March for Life reports for Canada for 2024, go to our special website called rebelfieldreports.com. And just before you click off, you should know we don't take a penny from the Trudeau government like 95% of media. Instead, we rely on people like you to keep us running and bring reports like this so you can donate when you're at that site. rebelfieldreports.com. I'll see you next time.